Welcome to Digital Painter Lee. I just wanted to really quickly show you how you can apply those painted backdrops into your photographs. So first of all, let's use Move Tool from the toolbar and drag it all the way onto our image photograph. So you want to use Control T or Command T from Mac to resize it. And we're gonna make it a little smaller. Whilst you hold shift, the image will resize. If you don't hold shift, it will stretch. So let's do it again, control T, and it will resize nicely without losing its proportions. So make sure you're happy with that fit and enter to confirm. Now we are ready to work on this image. On the bottom area here in the layers, you're going to find mask. You're going to press that and make sure the mask is selected because if you select this, you will be painting on top of this image. So mask is a very useful tool. Using a brush, nice soft brush, soft round, opacity, um, at the moment 100% and make sure you turn down opacity of this painted backdrop down to maybe around 60-ish. Come up closer and you can start painting with your black brush over that. Okay, make sure the black brush is selected and you can see that the image from underneath is coming up. So you might think, okay, I can just use my uh, eraser tool. Not so good because with the eraser tool, well, once it's erased, that's gone. And you can toggle between white and black. And if you go a little bit over it, you can save it with the white. That's the why the mask is the most versatile and the safest method. So if you just go over those areas here. Don't worry about the edges too much at the moment. Lovely. You can increase the size of your brush. I use my shortcut key which is a bright square brackets. Then you just go over that subject. Now if we have a little bit more smaller areas. You can go with your brush smaller and go more into detail because that will make or break your image if it's not done properly sloppy and just you see some texture and painted image over and not mask off. Your viewer will not believe it's real and it's not going to be a good result. And make sure that's masked off properly. Smaller areas, that's it. It does take a little bit of time. It is tricky with hair and a bit more scattered subject. So we're going to get into that in a minute. If I go back, control zero or command zero and it shows you the whole image that's starting to look good so i would work on those areas the other thing i would do around the bed because we want to be around maybe 70 percent to see the beautiful backdrop not being 100 percent because that's too solid and it's difficult to see the shadows that this person creates so 70 is a nice safe number. You can do, but then you have to create some shadows and be a little bit more careful. So make sure you go down with opacity, down to 30. You've got your black brush selected and just tiny little touches just to show those shadows that are created by the bed, by the leg. So it doesn't look too flat, it looks nice and realistic so we can come back in our white brush and just bring that 
tie gently around here. And now working on the rest. So back to black brush and masking of that person. Make sure you bring it back to the high. It is so useful, layers and masking. I couldn't live without it. Oops. So I'm pressing space bar to move my canvas around. And just painting here ever so gentle. I use my stylus uh, Wacom tablet so it's sensitive to pressure. So if I press very gently, it will very gently apply that brush. You might have to keep changing in your opacity on and off, just like that. So you don't have to be literal and take everything off. So let's get back into opacity and work a bit more here. Basically, you're going to have to cover the whole area, the whole subject. You don't want to leave any bits on the skin. It will be a horrible giveaway of amateur and it will look very sloppy. Don't forget about ears. And what, have I, what am I doing with hair? Is again, I'm taking the opacity down quite low and making my brush bigger and just gently touch. So it doesn't have to be done to the last hair. It can be quite forgiving. Especially when I design my backdrops, I make them quite light in the middle. So if they match nicely with your backdrop, of your original picture that's brilliant because if that photograph was let's say on a brown backdrop and my digital painting was white that wouldn't be a very good fit and you'll struggle mask it really nicely so you want to find something that is similar in tones well you can experiment I dare you but I think it might come up a little bit um, not very convincing basically don't forget about the legs here yeah, just make sure that light is nice visible it doesn't have to be literal literally the, exactly to the pixel skin is super important so you don't want to leave anything on the skin nicely nice and even you can see here okay and let's take a bit more a lift of that brush so you can always come back if you need to if you keep painting masking off for ages and ages and you made a mistake and you take a step back it will take off the whole big movement so it's nice to work in a smaller strokes just a little bit left those little areas here of the flowers you can take a tiny little moves and the beauty of masking is if you made a mistake you can always swap your brush over and basically mask back that's a tricky area here but because our opacity is down to 70 it gives a little bit of forgiving it doesn't have to be like completely spot on so just finishing those don't forget anything on the skin because you probably get away with things on those flowers or dress or whatever but when it's on the skin it's pretty bad looking so especially blue you don't want any blue sort of on the skin have a good look around if you have missed anything or if everything is nicely included okay obviously that leg is undone still 
and the blankie. And I could not recommend Stylus um, tablet enough. It is a lifesaver with editing, especially newborn skin or any digital painting. That is a wonderful tool to have. This much kinder on your wrists and hands as well. If you do lots of editing, that's a great thing to do. Let's have a look. Control zero. And I made that little shadow here reveal too much of the our original image. So it's just swapping those brushes over. Okay, and make sure you're on the brush tool and bring the opacity down a bit. And let's just bring that ever so gently. And again, you might have to go a few times back and forward on the tricky areas. Oh, look, that looks very blue here. Make sure you're on 100%. Yeah. Not good. Great, and I think it's pretty much done. It's just a little bit here. You might have a little quick scan before you save it completely. Sometimes you save it and then you see you missed a bit. So it's good to save it in a PSD version without your layers flattened down. So you can always come back to it in case you made a mistake and quickly mask off the little problematic area. Let's have a look, control zero. So you see on the 70% it gives us really nice realistic look. If we go 100%, um, it is not quite Depends what you like, really. So I would stick down to 75, maybe 72. That's a good number, I think, for this image. So what I need to do, I would probably work on those flowers just a little bit because they look a bit closed down. The nice thing is that the background from underneath is not offensive in case it comes up because you can see a little little areas in that background it has those light little bits shining through okay I think that's ready and I just need to go to layer flatten image and save it and that's done